If every day you noticed a pile of cash starting to stack up rapidly on your kitchen counter, there's no doubt in my mind you'd want to reach out and grab it. And that is exactly what we helped Kavi do in the past two years, turning his email list into his most valuable asset for his kit selling site, Sonics. More than 50% of my revenue on selling sample kits is from email marketing. Really? In November, I did a little less than $40,000 in sales. $22,000 of that was from my email list. It this shit works like he does all that i don't touch any of that anymore either ryan and robin are the the two guys that i talk to there they run my whole like email marketing but they do so much more than that they run my marketing uh and give me a ton of ideas for like the business side of stuff since starting to work together two years ago we have been able to generate over two hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars from email marketing a quarter of a million dollars just by typing some words and hitting the send button turning a digital list of email addresses basically into a virtual money gun but trust us this money did not just appear one day. It was a compounding effect of different strategies, better efforts, and optimized systems within email marketing, which is exactly what we will be sharing with you today in this video. Also, we're going to bring Kavi into this video as well so he can share some of his experiences throughout his journey, as well as, of course, share some gems for you guys to apply for yourself as well. And also, if you're currently making over $2,000 per month selling beats or selling kits and you need our help, please check out the link below to fill out our form and see how we can help you. Now, to give you the backstory and the much needed context, Kavi had reached out to us back in March, 2022. I, I was seeing his videos on like him talking about marketing for beat sales and email marketing and stuff. And I was like, mm -hmm. damn, it would be amazing to have like someone like him who understands the producer space, but is yeah. also really interested in the marketing to like help me. And then I was talking to Dilly about it and he was just like, why don't you just hire him to do it? Mm -hmm. I was like, Huh, okay. Oh, yeah. This was actually before he had made any YouTube content discussing his success. So I legitimately almost did not respond because I just assumed he was another random producer, not really doing too much at all. At this time, we weren't even offering agency services, but I just decided to say, hey, what the hell, and see what was up and start talking to him. And to my surprise, he was doing around 10K per month with his sample kit store. He was having good success, but he wanted to learn more about email marketing and learn how he could better utilize the emails that he was collecting. After all, he finally started to see the true value in email marketing and was noticing that there was this pile of cash that he was not grabbing and needed our help to get to it. So before we get too deep into this, let's talk to Kavi and get some more backstory as to where he was with his sample kit store and how he built it up to 10K in the first place. So when you'd reached out to us, you were already at 10K a month pretty consistently but I want to go back even further. What made you want to start the sample get store in the first place? In the first place, I feel like I started it. I was already making good money on BeatStars, like selling, um, sending my loops out for collabs. I was making good money on that, like 30K a month already. I was thinking about Wave Supply, the old internet money kit store. They're still selling kits on there, but, and I was just like, man, like that would be cool if I could do something like that where I'm not just selling my loop kits but i'm selling other people's kits and stuff like that instead of just like posting them on my beatstar store and running five dollars a day ads for like <laughs> two weeks and then sales dying off so i was just like oh like i've got some money to like invest in it now spend money on ads and stuff so like i might as well just try it and see what happens and uh yeah that's what got me i, I made the store in like a week maybe maybe like two days like i, I created the shopify store put up uploaded all my kits that i already had and then like got some of my friends to upload their kits and yeah i just immediately like i just i probably started it within like a week of thinking of the idea like i launched it and started it and i've been doing it ever since how fast would you say uh like money loves speed I think that's kind of one of the biggest things I've learned, you know, mm -hmm. working together with you is I remember Dark Nights, the first like production suite we dropped, it was like two weeks out. It was like, hey, this would work perfect for Halloween. I was like, dude, it's literally like two weeks away. <laughs> yeah, because I had just had a call with uh, TV Digital on and they, they were telling me how they're like how much money they're making selling production suites versus just normal kits. And then, yeah, I was like, oh, well, th like I could do a dark dark trap kit for Halloween. And then it was like two weeks away. We had no idea what we were doing and somehow we did it. And then did like, I think it did like 10K in the first week, right? Yeah, it did yeah. insane I, yeah, numbers compared yeah. to what was normally happening. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, a, a best selling kit at that point was like, if it did 2000 or $3,000 in the first month, it was like, that's like a, a banger. That's a really good one. <laughs> Obviously that's a bit more down the line. Going from zero of just starting the store to like your first $1,000, what did that look like in terms of you getting people to the site? So I think I had a little bit of 
I don't want to say advantage. I like whenever I started Loop Stash, I already was selling kits on BeatStars. It kind of was just like transferring the people who are buying my kit on BeatStars to this other site. So I was already making uh, around a thousand a month ish, just like mm -hmm. selling my kits on um, BeatStars, just because I had a, I had somewhat of a personal brand, not a big one at all, but I had a little bit uh, just because people would see my name on popular YouTube type beats all the time. Whenever I started that, I started actually like putting ad money into it in the first month. The first month I made $1,000. That was enough to be like, oh shit, like I might actually like try to do this more than just like a, I'll throw a kit on here every once in a while. And at that point I had committed to like, I'm going to drop a kit every single week. Then the second month I had dropped more kits because obviously it had been around six weeks of starting it i dropped more kits i had kits that i was already running ads on and my ad spend kept increasing because i kept running ads on every single kit that i kept dropping every week and that second month i made four thousand dollars what's your thoughts today on the five dollar a day like random instagram boost post i would do it only if you have money that you're willing to just like kiss goodbye Honestly, I think for me, even more than just building uh, or like profiting, like actually like I put a dollar in and I get $2 back in sales. I think it like pushed my profile to a bunch. Of, like I got a lot of followers from doing that because I was spending, there was a point in time where I was spending like $10,000 a month on boost posts on it. Like that was, that was stupid. But um, yeah, I was just, I was going crazy uh, spending money on the boost post, but it, it grew my following a bunch on Instagram, which I think leads in the future to all, like more organic sales that I I can actually profit off of. It's not a good strategy, but it's, I, I would definitely take the time to learn Facebook ads. If you have the idea, if you have a kit ready, just like start running ads. If they're doing horrible, try something different, try a different kit, try a different kind of ad. Or I would just say like the best thing is just to get started. You're going to suck in the beginning, no matter how you do it. So you might as well just like, just take the first step. Cause I feel like that's the part that a lot of people procrastinate. Switching from the like beat stars kit page into Shopify. Do you recommend that every producer does that? I think doing uh, like just putting it on BeatStars is okay if you're not, if you don't have the intentions of like, I want to build a sample pack company and you're just like, I made some loops. I just want to throw them out. I I think BeatStars is fine for that. But if you're like, I want to actually like, I, I want to make a living off of selling kits. Like, I think you, you have to like make a dedicated website to it. Cause it just, if you want to build a brand, I feel like you need to do it on your own website so that you can have more control over how everything looks. Yeah, I agree. It's just like looking at like sales pages, all the different integrations. And I mean, all the shit that we have done over <laughs> the past exactly, few years. Yeah. It's just, like I said, if you want to build a business 100%, but if you're just a producer trying to get some kids out there in terms of just having something, obviously that works. Getting now into, you had reached out and you already had MailChimp set up. What made you understand like, oh, I should have email marketing set up in the first place. What kind of made you solve the value and what it could be? I, I don't think I understood how powerful email marketing was. I think it was just like, I heard, a, I feel like I just, I don't know, the first people that come to mind, I remember like DJ Payne talking about email marketing or people who are putting out advice like that. I don't know, I just I, I just started doing it. Um, I wasn't really thinking much about it. And then it got to the point after like a couple of months of doing business and I started making decent money, I realized it's like, damn, like I'm making like 4K a month off of like, 4,000 emails on fucking email marketing. I was like, this is fucking like, this is actually important. Like I, I, I feel like there's times I thought to myself, I was like, I could literally delete my Instagram right now, but never run an ad again. And probably still, I mean, it would go down now that I, I know more like, cause you need all the touch points, but you could live off your email list essentially. Like if you really wanted to. To get into the email marketing side of things, when he had reached out, he had some basic email marketing setups, but nothing too solid at all, and was definitely losing out on making what I would say is easy money. At the time when reaching out, his list was around 6,000 contacts, and it was a mixture of customers as well as free leads, and he was using MailChimp for his email marketing. And this is a breakdown of his strategy at the time. So every week he would release a new kit and then send one email to his list with a coupon to buy it. And then also every Friday, he would send five to 10 loops to his list that they could use for free. This became known as Free Loop Friday. And ironically, this is what we turned into a major revenue driver for Kavi from just free loops. And I'll talk more about that later on in this video with the actual examples of what we did. So upon first looking into his account, we were happy to see that there was some consistent activity of campaigns every week, and he had an active email list with healthy open rates. You see, a lot of the producers we talk to nowadays, it's 
pretty much the same exact conversation. Hey, I see you guys help with email marketing. Yeah, how can we help you? Well, I have a list of 5,000, 10,000, 20,000 artists or more that I've collected over the past two years, but I've never sent out one single email to them. Can you help? And see, when you get to this level, there is a process that has to be done to essentially win back your contacts and re-engage your list. Because if you just import 5,000, 10,000 contacts or more into an email marketing provider and send out a campaign, odds are you're gonna have terrible open rates and go to the spam folder. And because you got started on the wrong foot by doing that, all of your future campaigns and emails are also gonna go to spam, so you're just digging yourself deeper in that hole. So going back to Kavi, what he was doing wasn't bad in any means. He had good open rates, but essentially it was like having a race car and only going 20 miles per hour. Sure, you're driving it, which is the functionality of a car, but you're not getting all that you can from it, right? You're just using it for its basic functionality, but not really what it's capable of getting you, if you understand what I mean. So then once we got more deep into his account, we identified a few major flaws as well. And all I can say is please pay attention to this part because you may be making the same issues yourself, or if you haven't started yet, these are the mistakes that you want to avoid making when you're getting started out and trying to scale up and grow and utilize an email list. So these were Kavi's three major flaws that we had identified. First, he wasn't utilizing his list effectively with campaigns such as special deals, promotions of previously released products, not just promoting new kits, and he wasn't doing any sales campaigns for holidays or for milestones. What this does is this approach put him in a difficult position where he felt obligated to release a new kit along with free loops every single week, because if he stopped, that means that all his email activity would die out as his email activity was just coming from those two things. And then the cherry on top is that his overall revenue would also decrease because it was largely dependent on those new releases for generating income. Essentially, there'd be a spike when he would release new kits, then it would die out, die out, die out. Next week, there'd be a little bit of a spike, die out, die out, die out. And essentially, those spikes would kind of come and go in their different levels of how successful they were depending on the kit but it wasn't really anything that you could scale up with. So yes, while it makes sense as to what he was doing, it's a bad place to be and it's not a solid foundation to build and scale off of. Think about it, what if Kavi wants to put more focus on the industry side? What if he wants to put more time into creating content? What if the dude just wants to take a vacation, right? What if he essentially wants to focus less on the kit store and not drop as many new packs? And so the thing is, without utilizing campaigns as well as automations properly, it's pretty much impossible to escape that weekly new pack drop, especially because that was his only email strategy. So like I said, if the new packs stop, the whole email marketing strategy stops as well, and that is not a good place to be. The second major flaw is that he only had one single automation set up. Now, if you don't know an automation is an email sequence that is triggered by specific actions or behaviors of a user. For instance, when a customer abandons a shopping cart, an automation can send them emails to remind them of their unfinished purchase and complete their checkout. And I just wanna say that if you do not have an abandoned cart sequence for your kit selling store, or if you're selling beats on Soundy, you need to get one set up right now. Usually in terms of driving revenue, the abandoned cart sequence is usually number two underneath the welcome series for our clients. So it's highly important that you have that set up. Now, of course, there are more automations that you can have set up than just abandoned carts. And essentially these automations are the backbone to having email marketing make sales for you while you're asleep and guiding people on their own personalized customer journey at scale because it's all automated. So in Kavi's case, while having one automation is better than none, it's like going to the gym, doing a few curls and then leaving. Yes, you're doing something, but it's not gonna get you the results that you are after. Now, like I mentioned, Kavi only had one automation and it was just the default one that MailChimp gives you for abandoned carts. So that was better than nothing, but at the same time, it was also just one single email that it wasn't really too effective at all. Just to give you some reference, in the current abandoned cart sequence we have set up for him and for our other clients, it's usually between four and five emails in total. So hopefully you're able to understand now that he was missing out on pretty much the most effective aspect of email marketing, which is using the automation. And we'll talk more about this later, but essentially we can send targeted emails based on user behavior, like someone looking at a product, someone just being active on the site, someone making a purchase, and so many more things. But like I said, we'll talk more about this later when we talk about our actual strategy. Now, the third major flaw is that he was missing out on creating journeys for non-customers to become customers, right? He didn't really have a great foundation for gaining new leads onto his list and converting them into customers. At the time of when we looked, all Kavi had was a free loop kit that you could sign up for with a form on his website, but 
This wasn't really being promoted on socials and it was hard to promote because it was just a little form on the homepage. And also there was no automation behind it to take those leads into paying customers with a special offer or some sort of incentive. Essentially, they got the free kit delivered to them and that was it. There was nothing trying to convert them into a first time customer. So going over everything so far, essentially the positive aspect was this. He had maintained an active list that didn't require us to remove any inactive subscribers, but there were some negative aspects as we've just discussed. His whole success with the Loop Store was dependent on the weekly drops or creating weekly free kits to maintain the email activity. And without those new drops, his revenue would also largely decline. He had a healthy amount of traffic and people visiting the site, browsing products, abandoning their carts and purchasing, but there were no email automations set up to trigger due to those behaviors and get people to go to the next step within the customer journey. Essentially, humongous potential earnings were just being ignored. So now we're gonna talk about our preparation and kind of how we took Kavi from just a struggling email list setup to, like I said, over a quarter of a million dollars in email revenue from the past two years. So first things first, we had transitioned Kavi from MailChimp to Klaviyo. Klaviyo is superior for email marketing, especially for Shopify stores, because its in-depth integration with Shopify allows us to collect so many data points and trigger automations based on certain behaviors on the site. Secondly, we wanted to install more automated flows to better help the user journey, like getting free leads to convert into customers, upselling current customers after their purchase, recovering abandoned carts, and more. As I'm sure you know, getting traffic to your site is one of the most challenging parts in the first place. And with e-commerce conversion rates between one to 3% of visitors converting into customers, setting up these automations is so necessary to guide visitors towards becoming customers, getting your customers to come back and spend more. The one thing that we have always preached is it's not about counting your traffic, but making your traffic count, doing everything that you possibly can do to optimize optimize what it is you are getting in the first place. And then if you have that down as you scale and get more visitors and more customers, it just becomes even more money because you have the foundation properly built in the first place. Third, we also wanted to improve the overall strategy of sending out these campaigns in the first place, like we had mentioned. This included doing things like special deals, sending more targeted campaigns using segmentation, and using email campaigns to also push out older products that have been previously released, but people haven't purchased those. And looking back at it right now, that was such a significant factor for us, as Kavi has transitioned from releasing kits once a week to now releasing about every six to eight weeks, considerably increasing his revenue as well. And that is largely due to all of the email marketing strategies that we have implemented for him. Fourth, we then aimed to expand and grow the list even more. Given that the campaigns and automations were now gonna be set up and optimized, we could bring in more contacts and start to scale. At the time when we started working together, Kavi was rapidly growing on social media, but within his content, he lacked calls to action to expand the email list. And looking back at it now, now, the timing of this worked out perfectly because if he had this huge social media following that he was growing before we started working together, nothing was really optimized on his email list to convert those free leads that he was getting in the first place, right? So that would be a really bad place to scale off of because the foundation wasn't properly built. What's your thoughts when people say like, oh, I don't want to build an email list like I have a YouTube channel? Uh, stupid. Because, well, one, the like YouTube algorithm can change and you can, st I mean, I've, I've exp right now I'm on like a hot streak. My videos are going crazy every single one I drop, but I could very well, like in the next two weeks, all of a sudden I'm getting like five, 10 times lower views than normal. And then, I mean, there's some people who go down like that and then never recover. Even if they have like a hundred thousand subscribers, they could be getting like 5,000 views on a video, which if you're talking about like selling a lot of kits, that's not that's not a lot of views to be like making really good money off of. I've heard it before, like you don't own your subscribers. You're just like renting the social platform. But whenever you get their email and you get their contact, you own that information and you can continue to market to them forever. Regardless of if YouTube wants to show it to them or not, you can show it to them in their inbox, like whenever you want, as long as you're not going to spam and shit. But people don't really go on YouTube to like buy stuff. Like they go to YouTube to be entertained. And then that, that might be their first touch point. Like, oh, I heard about this product. I looked at the page, whatever. Yeah. Like if they never see that video again, they may never 
think to go get that product again. But if you have their email, then you email them about it and they're like, oh, I saw that in that video. That was cool. Let me check it out again. Like when I'm actually, when I'm not at work on my phone on my lunch break. And then whenever they're looking at an email, I feel like it's much more of like a, you're expecting a salesy thing. So if you're opening that, you're, you're kind of more open to like buying something I feel than just like a YouTube video. I guarantee you right now, if I had to only live off the sales that my YouTube channel brings directly or only live off of email marketing, I'd be making way more on email marketing than just the YouTube. So, uh, love to hear yeah. it. Yeah, that's that's what I would stick with. So now let's get into the strategy of everything. So starting off with flows. So flows and automations and sequences are the same thing if you hear me kind of interchange through them. Essentially, the main idea is to get activity set up to push people onto the next stage on their journey to becoming a customer or a return customer. So the first thing that we did is we addressed the issue of conversion of these free leads into actual customers for Kavi. So despite generating a decent amount of leads from his website, sign up form, the conversion rate of leads into actual customers remained pretty low. So what we had done is we had actually replaced the free kit with now a discount coupon pop up. And the reason we did that is we assumed that if someone signed up for a coupon, they were more of a qualified lead since they likely intended to purchase. After all, why would you sign up for a coupon if you didn't have any interest in spending money in the first place? The point of a coupon is to save money, right? So looking back at it now, after switching to a coupon pop-up, this welcome flow with the coupon has generated over $14,000 in the past eight months and has drastically improved the quality of the email list subscribers as well. And to give you some more examples of the flows that we have installed were site abandonment. These are emails that send if someone visits the site but doesn't look at any products. The main goal of this email is just to send a follow-up email and push them towards certain best-selling products or collections in general. Next was browse abandonment. These are the emails that send to someone if they look at a product, but they don't add it to cart. So they were interested in a product, so now we're gonna follow up with them and getting them back looking at it through emails. Then of course, as I mentioned, we have cart abandonment. This is a series of emails that we are sending if someone adds to cart, but doesn't purchase. These flows are crucial as data shows that for e-commerce stores, nearly 70% of carts are abandoned. So just from this flow alone, we have recovered over $20,000 in revenue for Kavi in just the last year. And then of course, we have post-purchase. This is a series of emails that are sent to someone after they purchase a product. And we have different emails in the sequence depending on whether they are a new or returning customer. And then of course, we have emails to push them to newer products, special offers, and of course, upsells to other products as well to get them to come back and spend and more money. Next, we're gonna move on to segmentation. So I mentioned segmentation before, and segmentation is an important tool to where we can essentially group together contacts based on behavior or their purchase history. What this does is this allows us to send more targeted campaigns that would be more valuable to an audience based on their data or their behavior. For example, in November 2023, Kavi released a brand new Soul Kit. Now, after the initial launch email for the project, we sent a follow-up email a week later to anyone who had previously purchased a Soul Kit but hadn't purchased the new one that he released. So by using this strategy and using segmentation, this enabled us to personalize the email highlighting the fact that they had previously purchased a soul kit from us, as you can see in this example. And now when it comes to segmentation, it's really just about how creative and kind of how logically you can get thinking about a specific audience that you would wanna target with a certain email to promote a certain product. Now let's hop onto campaigns. So campaigns are basically the one-off emails that you send to an active segment of your list or a targeted segment of your list that you would personalize your emails to with segmentation, for example, of how we just discussed. And over the past two years, trust me, we have experimented with a ton of different ideas and strategies, and this is what we found to be the best. So first things first, we always have an email out for when a new kit launches. That did really change. And second, we kept the free loop Fridays, but we started to be more strategic with them. You see, these emails had very high open rates, so we would use them to tease upcoming releases, include special deals, or include dynamic content to show the person kits that they had recently looked at, but they hadn't purchased. So to remind them to check them out and hopefully purchase them. And as you can see, this strategy was a game changer for us. We're literally sending out these free sounds turned into major profits. So now let's talk about some things that we did change or newly implement. First were major sales campaigns. As Kavi was growing on social media because we had things optimized, his list was growing as well. And we were now sending campaigns to 10,000, 15, 20,000, 30,000, 40,000 contacts. So with running major sales campaigns for 
holidays, Grammy nominations, or other milestones, it had helped drastically. And these were highly effective in creating a sense of urgency and driving a ton of sales in just a short period. Not to mention, these campaigns were now pushing hundreds to thousands of producers back to the sites. And then, based on their behaviors, like I mentioned, automations would then fire to help get people to take the next step and turn them into a new or returning customer. So when we do a sales campaign that pushes people back to the site, you may have 50 people that are just active on the site but don't browse a product. You may have 500 people who browse a product but don't add it to cart. Then you may have 300 people who add it to cart but don't purchase. All those people then go into email automations based on those exact behaviors that they did where those automations will hopefully convert them into the next step of becoming a customer. And so to give you some more reference with that, here is the data of the email marketing revenue generated during the 2023 Black Friday sale. As you can see, campaigns made up about 70% of the revenue with pushing the deals and getting people back to the site. But then, based on their behavior, flows would then kick on and fire based on whatever they did on the site to help generate that remaining 30% of revenue. First time I was like, holy shit, was in November, or like Black Friday, whenever, wait, what did it make? Like, like was it 17 or was it like 20,000 or something yeah, like that? that Everyone was like, Jesus Christ, like, <laughs> And, and, and the best thing is like, I literally did not press one button for the emails. I may, I may have shot you some ideas like, oh, maybe we could do an email like this, but like, I didn't type anything. I didn't have to set up it. So uh, I made pretty much like 17, whatever, 20 grand for no extra work. I just give you guys a percentage <laughs> or whatever. So yeah, it was yeah. amazing. Second was weekly campaigns for previous products or special promotions. This right here is one of the main reasons that we were able to help Copy transition from releasing less products and making more money because of this email marketing tactic. What we were doing is we were just finding strategic and creative ways to draw up interest to push people from the email list back to existing products. And then of course, with this, we were then using segmentation to also push similar products back to customers based on their own purchasing history. To give you some more examples of this, during the first week of the new year, we targeted anyone who got one of Kavi's free money-making resources on the site. And what we did is we sent them an email for Kavi's producer playbook. This is a paid resource for more of the business side of making money as a producer. So since it was the new year, it was the perfect time to capitalize on the fact that everyone has these new year goals and they want to go harder, right? New year, new me, new goals. And it worked out perfectly. And just to give you some overall context in the kind of big picture side of things, in just the last 30 days of writing this video script, we have sent over 32 campaigns, excluding any draft emails or scheduled emails. So I mean to tell you that we are heavily active on weekly campaigns, whether it's through product pushes or sales campaigns or something else. Third was the product launches for bigger bundle drops. If you're familiar with Kavi, you probably heard about his big bundles like Elements of Soul, maybe Elements of R&B, or Elements of Trap, which is the one we just recently did for him. Now, if you don't know, these are essentially huge bundles that are put together and they usually contain eight to 10 kits as well as some extra bonuses as well. These bundles are high priced and high value, so we can run a big launch campaign for them as they're a pretty special product. And this usually involves hyping up the bundles before they drop, usually having a wait list, and then of course, sending multiple emails over a span of a few days, promoting the bundle, explaining what's included and emphasizing the value. Essentially with these big launches and how we're using email marketing, it's creating a huge sense of hype, urgency, anticipation, and it just results in significant sales every time that we run a special campaign like this for a big product launch. Then of course, we have growing the list. So as I mentioned before, Kavi just had a free loop kit on his website. So the list growth was depending on people browsing the site, seeing this form, and then deciding to sign up. Sure, once again, it's something which was better than nothing, but it wasn't an optimized process. So here is what we did to increase the efforts of this. First, we needed a more direct way to turn views on social media into email subscribers. So we had begun making special landing pages for certain free items, where once someone would put their email into the form on the page, it would give them the free item. And in this case, it's just a lot easier to send someone to a specific page for a specific item that you're mentioning in your content, rather than having a pop-up on the homepage or a form on the homepage that just fires at random. Second, we needed to make sure those landing pages that we're sending people to were optimized. This includes clear messaging, appealing visuals, and an easy to submit form. We also tested out different offers to see what would work best with his audience as well as we kept on going. Third, we optimized the emails that were sent to someone after they got signed up or the page that they were redirected to after signing up as well. 
So instead of just delivering the free item, we would use this opportunity to introduce Kavi, provide some value, and then also usually run a sort of mini sales campaign to promote a product or a coupon, for example. And then after they sign up, they'd also be redirected to a special one-time offer as well in some cases. So essentially this was helping us build a relationship with the new subscriber and move them towards making a purchase. And also after signing up, because of the redirect, we would have a more immediate offer to give them. And then of course, to promote these pages in the first First place in Kavi's YouTube videos and with using Instagram as well, we would tell him to add a call to action to that free resource and move people to that page. And then going back to Instagram, we also use a tool called ManyChat where you can tell people in your audience to comment a certain word on a post or DM or story reply with a certain word and it'll send automatically a message back to them. And so in this message, you can link them back to your offer or you can even collect emails to load right onto your list all straight from simply Instagram DMs. And so since working together with Kavi, we have grown his list to over 38,000 contacts from where he started at 6,000. So almost a 7X increase. On any given month, email marketing is like anywhere from 30 to 50% of my income selling kits. It, it makes me more money than paid advertising does. And it's a lot less expensive than running ads. So. I would definitely focus on building your email list because it's it's the easiest way to to make profit consistently, uh, at least in my experience. So I know we've we've obviously done a lot of stuff together, but if you had if someone was like, all right, well then how do I build it up? What would be your answer? Uh, so I actually got really into building the email list, as you know, in the beginning of this year, um, and because in the past it was just like maybe like once every three months i just drop a free kit or something uh but honestly back then i wasn't even capturing emails on i was just putting out a free kit <laughs> and not capturing emails um but it was more just like i had like a a thing on the page it was like if you want a free loop kit put your email in but that was it like i wasn't really it was just kind of like a automated thing that i wasn't really paying attention to in the beginning of this year i knew that i was going to drop uh, elements of trap and all these production suites that i've got coming up and I was like, those went crazy with my email list of like 20 ish thousand last year. If I could have like, imagine if I had a hundred thousand people, like it, by in theory, it should be five times the number, which is not exactly true. But, um, so in the beginning of the year, I started by, well, we did a bunch of different things, but I think the most effective things, surprisingly, one of the most effective things was my discord server. I just put an email gate to join my discord server instead of just like posting the invite link it would be like go to this put your email in and then we'll send you the link to join the discord server um, which obviously you can't do if you have no community um yeah but things like that where it's like or um i would post like a pdf like how to make money as a producer and then like on my instagram story i'd be like comment blueprint and i'll send you the link and then i have the many chat automation send them the link in the dm and then they click the link to go onto my website and then they have to put in their email to get the free pdf so pretty much just putting out free it doesn't even need to just be free kits but like if you're really good at playing guitar you could be like free guitar lesson like a, a 30 minute guitar lesson and all you have to do is give me your email boom and you get the free guitar lesson or piano or a free tutorial on how I make my beats. If you make drums, whatever, whatever you do that's special, you can do more than just here's a free drum kit. Here's a free loop kit. Cause those, I don't want to say they're played out, but it, it's just, it, it's easier to get drowned in like the, the sea of people putting out free loop kits. Cause there's just so many. So if you mm -hmm. do something that like sticks out, like how many producers are dropping a PDF on how to make money for free? Like, it's just like, you don't see that every single day you see like free loop kits every day so kind of thinking of like out of the box ways to get emails is a good way um but i will say like getting emails from dropping free loop kits that are similar to your paid loop kits is good because then you're getting people familiar with your product um that you're trying to sell them because if you do get them from a discord server they might just be interested in discord but not your kits in general yeah. um <laughs> but yeah i would just like just put a in general, just put out a bunch of free stuff and put an email gate before they can download or get access to it um, to build your email list. So you mentioned something there that I kind of want to pick apart is kind of the the long-term strategy, but overall kind of thinking more 
more bigger than just every week because you know for black friday before black friday you're also like hey in october i want to do a free kit every friday so that way we can try to just build the list more for yep. black friday and then the same thing for the production suites so i guess like mindset and perspective wise how have you started viewing it in terms of like bigger timelines if definitely, that makes sense definitely like in the i remember just like in the past like like every year before uh the last couple years black friday would come around come around and i'd be like oh shit black friday's in like a couple days i guess i should just like make a discount code for my story and like post it on my story and that was like the extent of like my black friday sale i'm planning um but yeah then last year black friday did the best it's ever done and um the whole month of october so a month before black friday I dropped a free kit every single week to build my email list up with the intention of like, I'm going to get all these new people in with this free stuff and kind of like warm them up to my stuff. They're going to see how fire it is. And then, oh, all of a sudden my stuff is 80% off. Now it's like a no brainer to like go in and start paying for stuff instead of just like doing it last minute. Cause then, yeah, it's just, I'm thinking of things on like a, a much longer time horizon now, like, uh, ryan created the the whole calendar for like the year like we have like every ver, almost every single email and like every single kit drop and everything like dates planned already so we know like okay we're dropping this kit in like two months i should probably start posting on my story about it because like i want to start hyping it up or like i can know like oh this kit drops this day i should make a youtube video two weeks before so that it's ready to drop on this day to promote that kit that drops that same day or whatever it is um and i feel like just moving with a plan like that i will say though i think moving with a plan that far in advance when you know what you're doing is working when you're still in the phase of trying stuff out you kind of need to be malleable and like be able to be like oh shit that didn't work even though i was planning on doing this for the next couple months i need to pivot and do something different um but yeah moving mm -hmm. once you know what's working or at least have a, a pretty good idea of what's working um i would say definitely like start planning ahead and thinking more long term with things um because yeah it's been a game changer for us so now i want to get into some specific things that we have learned so essentially engaging with your audience continuously is essential if you're not sending out emails if you're not sending out email campaigns and updates about what you're doing what you're up to people are going to forget about you and you want them to be essentially having your brand in the forefront of their minds. So of course, having content is important, but also email is another great tool for that. And it can be more direct because you can link people back to certain things, right? Whereas a YouTube video, they're watching the content. You have to do the call to action. They have to click the link in the description. Email is like, Hey, here's a thing. Just click right there. You know what I mean? And then also in terms of an email marketing strategy, it should provide value, whether through exclusive deals, helpful information, resources, and so much more. Also in terms of generating leads, don't forget about the landing page and just the overall process of how someone is actually going to join your list in the first place. Because if you just have some dinky little form on your website that really doesn't have a strong call to action that you can do in your content, a lot of people aren't going to be signing up for it. And then in terms of automation and personalization, these have proved to be some of the most powerful tools with email marketing, right? By tailoring our emails to customers based on their behavior or specific interests, we have significantly increased engagement as well as drove more sales. When it comes to having an email list, a well-segmented email list is such a valuable asset because you're allowing for more targeted campaigns and valuable content and just reducing the risks of people unsubscribing due to irrelevant content for them. And and then once again, big picture, just optimizing the user experience at every stage of the customer journey is crucial from joining the email list to each interaction with the emails, right? You essentially want to push people towards that next step. And depending on what actions they've took to trigger that automation, that next step looks differently. And then lastly, we learned that patience and persistence are key. Building and nurturing an email list takes time and the results aren't always immediate. However, with consistent effort and a focus on providing value, 
we have achieved what I would say are pretty impressive results for Kavi. And to better show you that, here are the results from the 2022 year, our first year working with Kavi, essentially starting in May, I believe, as well as the results from the 2023 year. Not everything happens right away. And because of the testing that we've done, it's helped us get way better results for him. Now, like I mentioned, if you currently make more than $2,000 per month selling beats or selling kits online, go ahead and click the link below to fill out the form to see how we can best help you. Peace out, and maybe who knows, you could be the next case study on here. Have a good one.